Welcome to the Secrets to Mindful Health, where we explore the hidden truths of wellness in all its forms. From physical and mental health to spirituality, join me, your host, Beth Warren, at Nourished by Beth on Instagram and TikTok, registered dietitian for over a decade and single mom of six, as I share my personal journey overcoming challenges towards self-love and wellness. Together with my guests, we will inspire and motivate you to prioritize your well-being and create a life of balance and fulfillment. Let's embark on a transformative journey towards a healthier, happier you. I'm glad you're here. On today's episode, Clearing Clutter, Designing Your Space and Mind with Stacey Ayash, we're going to be exploring the transformative power of decluttering your physical space and your mind with Stacey, an experienced interior designer. We will discuss practical tips for creating an organized environment that nurtures mental clarity and peace, plus will segue into Stacey's own wellness journey and health and her transformation and self-love. Stacey Ayash is an interior designer, super talented and creative behind Stacey Ayash Designed, a renowned firm based in Brooklyn, New York, with a passion for creating beautiful and functional spaces. Stacey believes that good design has the ability to transform not only a room, but also the lives of those who inhabit it. As a devoted wife and mother of three, Stacy's design philosophy is centered around creating environments that promote harmony, balance, and overall well-being for her clients. Her unique blend of creativity, practicality, and attention to detail sets her apart in the world of interior design, making her a sought-after expert in the field and for this podcast. Welcome, Stacy. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, if you want to expand on that, what you got into the field for of interior design, what led you to be here and what you want to share with our listeners? So, well, that to me is two questions. Like oh. what got me here to you to talking about how design can improve your life or how I got into interior design because the way I got into interior design was completely completely organically, actually. I did not study interior design. At first, I went to Parsons for fashion design. Mm. But the things that you learn at Parsons are very specific design concepts that can be translated, you know, throughout any type of design field. So with that foundation, I'm able to apply those design concepts to a person's home, whereas before I was, you know, using those design skills to design children's wear. And after having kids, I needed to pivot because I couldn't be in a corporate environment that was that I had to commute to and mm -hmm. not near my two little children at the time. And we had just bought our house and my surroundings have always had a huge impact on the way I feel mm -hmm. and what's going on around me visually really, really matters. And it was important that I felt comfortable in my own space and using all those design skills and seeing how I was able to just make that work for myself and i thought i could help other people with this from a really approachable way more than because at the time i i couldn't have afforded to hire an interior designer to help me but at the same time i am a designer so i was like okay you just have to you know, change your perspective a little bit. Like it's, it's still design. Design has to work. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, that it has to work, I've been able to apply that philosophy across the board in my life. Mm. Like, okay, you're designing a product, you're designing a dress, you're designing a home. It has to work for the end user the mm -hmm. end user's experience has to be what's at the forefront and the way i see this relating back to health because it's the same exact thing 
the end user is you, Mm -hmm. right? And how many people think about what they want? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there forcing them to talk about their morning routine. Do you Mm -hmm. work in the house? Do you see people in the house? Do you have clients? Do you have guests over? Do people just show up unannounced and you have to scramble and figure it out? Like, what are the design solutions that will improve your life here? Mm. Because it's so much more important than what it looks like. You're coming to me. Yes, I'm a design professional. I have excellent taste. It's going to look gorgeous. But then there's also the question, do you, do you want it to be, wow, gorgeous? Like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this before. Would you want people to come in and say, I love your space. It's so pretty and calming and tranquil. And, and how do you want to feel in the house? How do you want to feel in your space? Because okay, you might be looking at a gray wall, but that gray wall might be very soothing to you. And that's exactly what you asked me for. I love that piece of this because that's what I always try to help people recognize they need to feel or should feel and they don't know it of themselves. They don't know what they feel. They don't know to stop and feel. Right. They don't know to stop and feel. And that's the other component where I feel like, because I've been working with you for a very long time. Like I'm that's how I I know exactly that we share the same philosophy yeah. in terms of you, you have to put in the work mm-hmm. also. So like you have to go through the process and the ups and downs of it. And as you tweak it along the way to make it better and to make it better for the person who hired me, but also for myself because... Mm-hmm. I have to remind myself, I have to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I have to remind my clients and myself, you know, we picked this amazing thing out. You're so excited. You can't wait to get it in and everything. They're like, can I have it tomorrow? It's Mm. like, no. It's going to be like six months. And it's (laughs) such a (laughs) letdown. That even shocked me. I was thinking a week. A week? No. Try like... You're not going to see any progress for six months, let's right, say. But the process and, takes time. Uh, but the process takes time. Yes, it took us five minutes to pick it. We know exactly what we want now. I got you so like... In it. You know, I, I beelined you straight to your to your goal. And now we have to wait. Right. Uh, the art of so, waiting. Yes. Every answer is time. Everything takes time. Everything takes time. And it's helped me practice more patience in my own life. Mm. Because if I'm going to sit there and tell my clients, listen, patience is a virtue and you really have to like, and I I really mean it. I mean, I say it to just for the, for the laugh factor, because I I have to ease the situation. Right. If I'm like, there are cases where I'm telling them like your bathtub is not coming for six months. Oh, and it's going to hold up the plumber. Yeah. And the rest of the job until it gets here. I'm just using an example. Mm-hmm. I mean, in that case, I choose a different bathtub probably, but right. something that can't be just replaced, mm-hmm. you know? But and isn't it the, the fact how then it's so much more worth it at the end when you have exactly what you wanted, the way exactly. you planned it, you exactly. took the time. And when I can get them over that part of it and get them to practice the patience because it's going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. And I applied this exact philosophy to my weight loss journey Mm. that I don't care how long it takes. I'm just going to stay focused. And if the only thing I could be consistent about is my brain setting, even if I don't eat good, even if I'm not exercising yet, even if I'm not doing things that are healthy for, you know, my journey, what that, that if it's, it's not going to get me to my goal, I have to figure it out as I go along Hmm. and being able to apply those, the things that I've learned just from being a designer and getting older, Mm -hmm. of course, always helps because there's wisdom with that age Mm -hmm. and and just do it better than you did the day before. 
Yes. I love having guests like you on my podcast and why I choose guests like you and you on my podcast, because I know that we are always open to seeing Mm -hmm. more than what's right in front of us. And I think also when you have a passion in what you do, it then rewards you back in hitting you a certain way because you're giving so much, you're also taking in. And Mm -hmm. then, like you said, the best scenarios when then you take in whatever you do and then apply it to your own life in other ways, which Mm -hmm. like you said, we share very similarly, me as a dietitian and practice. So I love that. But I'm just wondering more the earlier piece you were sharing about when people should feel what like what do they want about their place? Like, how do they want to feel in their place or in this room? Exactly. Because so often we neglect ourselves. We're not thinking about us first, our kids, our families, our work, my clients, and I'm last on that list. And then when you phrase it to them that way, like, I don't care how you want it to look because it's going to look however you want. It's going to, it's going to completely, you know, it's going to be your style. It's going to reflect your style. And you might not be able to tell me what your style is, but you can tell me what you want to feel. Mm. I want to walk into my bedroom. I want to feel calm and serene. I want my living room to be exciting because when I have guests over, I want them to be flipping out so I could feel like I'm the star for the day. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to have clients who can be that real with you. Yeah, and say, who can even and, tap into that inside right, who themselves. could tap into that and say that. Well, I want my guests to be wowed in my living room, but I don't care if my den is always a mess and my kids are in there. I'll just shut the door and ignore it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. give them things that are going to be good. That I want it to look great, but... I don't want to have to hold my breath every time someone goes in there. Right. I think I what you're also, to... yeah, I think what you're also saying is that no matter what, it'll look pretty or it'll look, right. it'll look good, but right. how do you want to feel? And, right. and the opposite, maybe when people don't think about it and they're like, just make it pretty, but then they'll, they don't feel good in it. And they didn't realize right. that and was important. Right. And I've had people, I've done redos mm. years later, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. And, they learned from their first experience that the designer didn't really ask me anything about me. It was, oh, I want to like tear up all, with that. <laughs> right. It was like all about them and their vision and, oh, well, you need unique pieces that, that nobody else has and not necessarily true. I'm not saying I don't agree with that. You right. know, yes, of course, you, but that's not what it's all about mm-hmm. for me. The practice of interior design is how can I improve your life? Mm, You're not just your all, space, your not just life. Your space. How are we improving your life? How is this going to improve your life? Because if it's not going to improve your life, why are you spending all this money? Yeah, I want to share like, that I... I, I I recognize that on my own over the years, like you said, with, with age in terms of not only people you keep around you, but literally what you surround yourself with, literally even, even memorabilia sur- or like something. Absolutely. You know, I, 100%. So I, you know this, but I got divorced with six mm-hmm. kids and I moved into my home, not my forever home yet, Stacey, then you're no, going to get the phone yet. call. We're, okay. Yes. yes we're in my, sure. uh, but we're in a, a ground, like a steady home, which is, was very mm-hmm. important to me. Of course. As a rental. And I didn't have a huge budget, but I told myself, I want to invest in my bedroom. Why? This Mm -hmm. is a big thing. Now I'm sleeping alone. You know, I am the like needing to lead this house. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I wanted my bedroom to be a safe space that in the past wasn't, and I wanted it to feel safe. I wanted it. So when I say I didn't have a budget, but I invested in my room. I went on Wayfair. <laughs> Excellent I went resource. Away. Yes. And Excellent I, resource. I put, uh, we should get Wayfair to, to sponsor your, I know podcast. Wayfair. Hi. Hello. I want a new, I want my, my kids' rooms are not furnished. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> so I got, you know, a good bed. I never had a bed. And it was really, that was also a journey. I thought first I wanted a king, like, oh, a whole king bed to myself. And then mm -hmm. I noticed I was crumpling onto one side. And I was like, this mm -hmm. is so sad. I, give me a queen. So right. I, I gave back that bed. I got a queen and I was, it was perfect. You know, it was a nice amount of space. So I'm just saying it was a journey to even feel mm -hmm. what I wanted or to feel even, what exactly, felt right. To figure out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so, I even then felt the home home goods. I feel home goods like a beast. I can't walk in there. Or sometimes I browse without a cart. By the way, I'll stack a ton of things in my arms. But That's um, what I do. <laughs> I, I try, I've tried that trick. It doesn't work. It doesn't and now work. I just get a cart. Now I just get a cart. And even if it just houses my coffee. Right. As I roll right. down and look. I, uh, because I yeah. never used to go there ever yeah. because i i didn't have time for a hit or miss thing in the summer i'm a little bit more laid back and yeah. i needed to get someone into their house really quickly and like do the accessories in one hour literally so, so you had a field day at there. home goods a field day they, it's the they couldn't believe how much i spent at home goods yeah oh my <laughs> the, god the, the client was like what yeah so one thing i'm like a sucker for any sign i was good with my uh my color scheme that I had in mm -hmm. mind. And so any gold, if you find, you could pick this up for me too. Or any gold mantra sign that's in okay. gold and white, I grab okay. because also you never find it again and you always regret it. You never so find them and I, I love those mantras. Yeah, so I have like a big mirror and I put these mantra signs on it. And mm -hmm. during that time in my life, that was very important. It was like, um, she believed she could, so she did. And it was, right. she created a life she loved. I exactly. have all these literally gold and white signs around my gold mirror and, and it's very special to me and it made me mm -hmm. feel safe and it made me feel like um, independent um, and empowered. And that's, it's like, okay, let's, to some people it's and like, that's let's relax, you that's your bedroom. In, no, yeah, that's but you want to feel in your home. Yeah. I want to feel powerful. I want to feel creative. I want to feel safe. Yeah. These are things that, you know, you're a strong girl boss and you should feel those things. Yeah. And like in your most intimate places, you know, exactly. like in your privacy, exactly. of your, even for in yourself, the privacy, even for yourself. Exactly. What are your nighttime routines that mm -hmm. interferes in how we do your bathroom? Like I said, it's, it all comes down to life improvement. And I feel like in that way, we have always been in sync Yeah. because you kept telling me you have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Right. Right. And yes. I really say that. Okay. I get a manicure. I do my hair. I take care of myself. But cooking for yourself, feeding mm. yourself, the things that you want to eat. Not that, you know, I don't make healthy dinners or anything. Like I, I saw your story last night with the with the Spanak and everything. Yeah. And that's my favorite. But my kids hate that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> There has to be so, a balance. I, right. I need the, so the rice and lentils a, and only two right. ate it, you know? It's, right. So there has to be a balance. And and I feel like the most important thing I've, I've learned in my life journey to date is the only thing you have control over is yourself, your own reactions, and your choices. Mm. And... I, you have to choose yourself every day, even if you have to remind yourself, hey, hi, like, okay, I've gone on this weight loss journey. I've lost 50 pounds. Awesome. Now I have to maintain that. I want to make and sure everyone caught that. Stacey lost 50 pounds. Right. I lost 50 pounds, guys. <laughs> um, I had diabetes and it was a huge wake up call. And like I said, I had already been determined on this journey to not give up that mm. I was, and I kept falling off the horse Yeah, every time because I would succumb to my emotional eating and I would succumb to just being in a rush and just starving and eating to, and just wanting something good and yummy and not worrying about that because it probably comforted me and I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't mm. being patient. I was doing everything that I tell my clients not to do. And it's mm. like, okay, 
there's a disconnect here and I'm a big believer in just keep it real. Mm. Honest. Keep it real. Right. Just keep it real. Like, um, and I don't want to come in and like sound like I'm making excuses every time. I don't want to be a victim of my circumstance. Mm. I'm in control here. Right. And I made the life changing decision to have sleeve surgery Mm. after years of trying to be on the Beth Warren plan, which worked in my brain. But at at that point, I I physically couldn't lose that kind of weight without Mm -hmm. any help. And then the diabetes diagnosis just made it either go on medication for the rest of your life or do this, get help to get it off. Mm -hmm. And now work your ass off for the rest of your life to (laughs) make sure that you maintain this and take care of yourself. Because I, and I, and I made myself videos of when I was heavy and miserable. And I said, don't screw this up. Don't do that to us. Right. Because you're, you're miserable. Your most important thing for me anyway, is I like to be able to get dressed quickly. Mm. I'm always rushing. And if nothing in your closet fits, it takes forever. Mm, and hard. on top of it, and on top of it, you're left with a whole pile of clothing that has to you go back. You hang it back up. Right, yeah. you have to hang it back up. So now it's just if you affecting were late your to quality right, of life. Yeah, exactly. Your, was so it interferes in my quality mm-hmm. of life. I built this beautiful closet for myself mm. that I knew sure I needed. Yeah. yeah, I knew I needed this amazing closet, right? I Because I needed to take care of myself and have a dressing room. Right. And then I can't fit into anything in that closet. It was mm-hmm. the most depressing yeah. feeling on earth. And then when the doctor was like, you're no longer in the pre-diabetic range. You have diabetes. Scary. Right. I think what it's we're like- saying here, though, is you always had the mindset. You work so strongly on your mind. If anything, first of all, nothing is is not worth it in the area of wellness, meaning you didn't, let's say, waste time on that because I feel like it was like your steadfast. No, I didn't waste time. I'm saying. No, of I course. Just- that's what right, I'm saying, like, because your steadfast determination and all that work on your mind helped you in your journey and then post-surgery is what you're saying. Right. So now post-surgery, at first you can't eat, you you automatically just lose weight. To them, I was like the perfect candidate. I only mm-hmm. had 50 pounds to lose, which is, you know, as far as weight-wise, like you needed us at that, I wasn't heavy enough to really mm-hmm. qualify for the surgery. You needed a second health issue, which the diabetes was Mm -hmm. and they I lost my train of thought of like the the, my point you were saying that um you needed both to do the 50 you had to first you couldn't eat exactly I couldn't yeah so like right so afterwards you can't eat you need to get in a certain amount of protein or your hair starts falling out and which it did so um and then you have to learn how to eat again. You have to now, right. teach you, yourself. Now, this you is how have I'm going to teach yourself eat. how to eat again. Mm-hmm. And I've always been consistent with Pilates once a week mm-hmm. over the course of the whole entire journey. I've always been active and very fit. And now when I go to Pilates class, the thing that I see, the, I can see the definition in mm. my muscles that was there from before because obviously I didn't do that in a year. Mm-hmm. But now that I can see it, it's motivating me right. to come back tomorrow. My performance yeah. is better here. It's working. Oh, I see. You're seeing your this, progress. You're I see this clearly. oblique muscle. Yeah, right. something's moving. And then... Balancing that with 90, 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I'm not eating tremendous amounts of food. And that was always portion control has always been an issue for me. It's an Mm -hmm. issue for everyone in my family and (laughs) sorry guys, but it is. (laughs) Um, And seeing how much less food I need to be satisfied allows me to balance with 
a cheat like of a three right. bite. You learned how uh, to mindfully treat yourself, which is I, I, another exactly. episode. Exactly, I've learned how to mindfully treat. Yeah, myself. I think you tapped into your mindful eating mechanisms because of all your education you've learned in the nutrition right. world, and you were able to then implement it. Right, you saw the progress, and the cycle started turning the exactly. other way. Exactly. But I wanted to ask you about way. decluttering your spaces, like how that enhances your mood. Sometimes I lay in my bed and I stare at my closet, bulging out, and I'm like, I need to get rid of fifty things right now. And like, you should. And what's that about? And, and why is should. our space like I, cluttering? I, I don't know. It clutters your mind. It, right. it really does. It, it, it clutters. A cluttered space clutters your mind. When I go into someone's house and there's 8,000 tchotchkes all over the place. And even if they have sentimental value, I'm like, <laughs> let it go. Like, we got an hour of this down. You know what? I have a perfect example of how, like, one of my clients achieved this. She has this gorgeous doll collection it can literally be displayed all the time it's it's like going into a doll museum it's the most unbelievable thing i've ever seen once a year she takes it all out displays it this year in her gorgeous dining room because it's Mm -hmm. finished and you walk through this doll emporium and like this excitement builds and then she puts them away all packed up and they have their own closet so they're out of the way Hmm. they're not all my point is that like those things in doses work right you're having company you're having a party you're gonna have excess out but if you really need to clear your mind you don't want a ton of crap all over like you leave the Windex on the table and the paper towels. And then next to that, you have your fruit. And then next to that, you have all the bags you brought in. It's just clutter. And it, it, it does, it does something to our brains and just changes your mood. Yeah. I see and that. In that. And with that change of mood, sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, everything sucks. Yeah. I think what also we're saying is um, when you mentioned about sometimes people do a redo, we were a little bit referencing it in a, in a different way, but isn't it cool sometimes to see the evolution like of your life, like actually like being open to wanting to change up the space, like a feeling comes and like embrace it, go with it. Yep. Go with it. I've been moving furniture around since I'm four years old. (laughs) I literally, no. Also, even working with your same stuff, just sort of moving it. Yes, yes. Just moving it around. I love that. And repurposing it. And and whenever someone tells me, like, I can't do anything really, but you can clean up. Yep. And you can paint the walls white. Oh. Because the lack of color allows you to be flexible and bring whatever colors Mm. in you want anytime you need a change. That's smart. That's very smart. I felt that. You you could also do it black, but most people are too scared to to do that. But if you want the drama, then (laughs) you should have one because they are the most calming, serene. Wow. I want to try that. My dream house coming up, Stacey. All right. I want to thank you so much for coming on. Let's leave everyone with with a tip. Let's do like a health one and an interior design. But I think what we're also saying is they mingle with each other. So what kind of message? Yes. What kind of message? My message is whether or not you're in your own space or not, the your number one priority needs to be to take care of yourself. Because you can't take care of anybody else if you're not taking care of yourself. And no matter what the challenges that you're going through, God doesn't give you these challenges for no reason. Focus on the lesson and then pay it forward. Mm -hmm. Teach it to somebody else. Share it. It wasn't like it wasn't meant for only you. It's meant to help others. Hmm. Like give purpose to it. I love that. Okay. How can we find you on Instagram? What's your Instagram handle? At Stacey Irish and my design pages at Stacey Irish designs. And she's an amazing interior designer. So really look her up and she really Stacey underscore Irish underscore design. And I think it's tagged anyway on your yeah, Stacey Ayesh yeah. page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, well, is. thank you so much for coming on. I'm happy we did this. Me too. Thank you for having me. No problem. Don't forget to hit subscribe. 
or follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Nourished by Beth or listen on Spotify at the Secrets to Mindful Health podcast.